when I first signed up with the Bureau. I knew I would see things. Messed up things. Things other people wouldn't want to see. And now? What time is it? What? What time is it? I have... 4.33. We just started. You have 57 more minutes. You wouldn't lie to me, right? What does your watch say? 4.33. I was given a case. I was told to archive a post on Reddit. Someone was posting on the subreddit scared at work. It was like some game people play. People would post about times they were scared at work or make up something creepy. I was told to archive everything I could about... about this... this... whatever this is. I work at a gas station, out in Dingman's Ferry, Pennsylvania. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy, and it pays alright. A few weeks ago, this new guy started. I'll call him Jeremy. Jeremy is weird. He's about 25 or 26, and he hardly speaks, but he has the creepiest laugh I've ever heard. My boss and I have both noticed this. But it's never been a problem, so there's not much we can do about it. Customers have never complained about him, and he's always done his job fairly well. At least, up until a few weeks ago. Anyways, that's when things started going missing. Employee theft can be a problem at any business that sells consumer goods, and there's only one person at a time working at this gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started noticing that we were short on motor oil. At first, it was a few containers at a time. Then entire shelves and boxes from the back room. Pretty soon, entire shipments would be gone the day after we got them. And it would always be right after Jeremy's shifts. My boss started checking the security camera tapes from every single night Jeremy worked. But he could never catch him in the act. Jeremy would lock up at closing and then the motor oil would be gone the next day. My boss usually takes the tapes home with him to try to catch Jeremy stealing, but his daughter had a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered to pay me overtime, under the table, so I obviously took that offer. There are three cameras, so he gave me three different tapes to check. I figured it would be a long night, but I'm trying to save up for a vacation so I really needed the money. I took the tapes home, popped them in an old VCR, and sat back. Two days ago, the last time Jeremy worked, he started at 4 p.m. Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He counted up his drawer, switched off with the girl that was working before him, and waited for a customer. The first person who came in was Miss Templeton. The timestamp on the video read 4.03. She's a regular. She picked up her cigarettes and a newspaper and paid with a 20. Nothing unusual there. The next customer was some local guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle. Usually comes in every few days. He filled up his tank, got a bag of beef jerky, paid with his credit card, and then left. The next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I'd never seen him before. But we get plenty of strangers passing through just like any other gas station. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, paid with a $100 bill, and went on his way. I sat back and sighed. The only thing more boring than doing this job is watching someone else do it. My boss's offer was enough to keep me watching though, so I left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I had a feeling that if Jeremy was stealing motor oil, 
he knew we were suspicious of him by now. I didn't expect him to be dumb enough to let us catch him on camera. Things stayed boring and routine until about 5 o'clock. At 5.03, Miss Templeton came back in. She must have forgotten something. But she didn't. She brought the same pack of cigarettes as before. And the same newspaper. She paid with another 20. That's odd, I thought. But then again, she's a little absent-minded. I thought Jeremy should have told her she already had her smokes, but it's not against the rules to sell somebody the same thing twice. That's when Ron came in again. He bought another tank of gas for his motorcycle again. I later checked the outdoor camera because I thought he had a car that he wanted to fill up. He also bought the same pack of beef jerky. He paid with his credit card again. No big deal. I figured this was just a weird coincidence. Miss Templeton is forgetful, and Ron probably owns more than one Harley. That's when the guy in the cowboy hat came back in. I felt a chill run down my spine. Don't get Diesel. Don't get Diesel. I found myself whispering to my empty living room. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel and paid with another $100 bill. Every move he made was identical to the first visit, right down to the way he scratched his nose before he walked out. Either this guy is rich, owns a lot of trucks and just moved into town, or something really bizarre was happening. Every customer for the next hour was the same as before. Every. Single. One. I was seriously freaked out. And then at 6.03... Miss Templeton walked back in. She bought her cigarettes and newspaper again, and paid with a 20 again. I thought I was going to lose it. I only watched another half an hour before I started fast forwarding through the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come in at the exact same times, exactly one hour apart. Now I know what you're thinking. That sneaky asshole Jeremy must have messed with the tapes and found a way to run a loop of the first hour of business over and over. But that wasn't the case. The store has windows, and I watched as daylight faded into night. Also, Jeremy's routine didn't loop over. He swept, mopped, restocked, and did all of his duties exactly how you would expect. But the same customers kept coming in. I was panicking at this point. Something was seriously wrong with what I was seeing, and I had no explanation for it. I skipped ahead to when he locked up and walked out to his car. He hadn't stolen anything. But I kept watching, just to make sure. I fast forwarded one last time to about midnight. At exactly 12.03, out of nowhere, Jeremy's face pops up on camera. I don't mean he moved his head into view. I mean that one second the store was empty and the next second his face was all I could see. He wasn't looking at the camera though. He was looking at me. I was sure of it. I screamed and fumbled for the remote, but by the time I grabbed it, he was gone. He left just as soon as he'd arrived. One frame he was there, and the next he wasn't. My hands were shaking like crazy, but I popped in another tape. The other indoor camera shows the back area by the cash register. I would be able to see how he got up to put his face in the camera like that. I skipped ahead to 12.03, but there was nothing. I would have been able to see him standing on a chair or something on this tape, but he wasn't there. I also didn't see him enter the store at all, or leave. It's like he wasn't really there. What I did see, however, was that at 12.03, the motor oil vanished off the shelf. All of it. Same as Jeremy's face. One second it was there, and the next it wasn't. I turned that tape off and went to bed, but I didn't get a wink of sleep. My body is exhausted right now, but my mind is racing. That tape was undoubtedly the creepiest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. I work in a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tapes back in, 
and let him know what I found. But really, what the hell am I going to say? Jeremy works the night shift tonight, directly after me. I don't want to be there when all this goes down. What if he somehow knows I was the one that saw him on the tapes? I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I'll have to show my boss the tapes, but I don't want to watch them with him. Anyway, I'm going to try again to get some last minute sleep before I have to go in and deal with this. I'll let you guys know what happens. I'm updating from my phone. Apologies in advance for errors. My boss just finished watching the last of the tapes. I told him what to expect. But you can't really prepare someone for something like that. He's scared shitless. I am too. And Jeremy is due to come in at four. We've got a little over an hour to get our shit together, but none of us knows what to say to him. Is he just some creep who likes to steal motor oil and scare the shit out of people? Or is he something else? And what about the time loop? Has anyone here on Scared at Work ever seen anything like this before? My boss said he never noticed anything like that in the other tapes, but maybe he wasn't watching that hard. If he just fast-forwarded the tapes, he might not have noticed. Or maybe Jeremy knew we would be watching, and that's why he did that crazy head-popping thing. The way he smiled into the camera was like a little kid, showing you a sandcastle they just built. Maybe he was showing off. I don't know. I probably sound crazy. I sure feel the part. I'm going to talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll update again tonight, but I have a really bad feeling about how this is going to play out. Uh, yeah. There's no sign of Jeremy. We tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Uh, yeah. There's no sign of Jeremy. We tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's no sign of Jeremy. Yeah. There's no sign of Jeremy. There's no sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. But his phone's been disconnected. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I just got home and saw my previous updates. Things make less sense now than ever. Here's what I can tell you. I went to work. Jeremy never showed up. My boss and I decided to call the police, as you're well aware. When I picked up the phone to call though, the sun went out. I shit you not, that's what happened. Apparently I blacked out for exactly 5 hours, because when I looked at the clock, it was 9.33. I think I got stuck in Jeremy's time loop, and then snapped out of it at the exact point I blacked out if that makes any sense. But that's when things really got weird. My boss was right next to me when I blacked out, ready to corroborate my story to the cops. When I came to, the phone was in my hand, but it was dead, not even a dial tone. My boss was right there, but he wasn't moving. He was standing up, but frozen. I looked at the clock again, and it wasn't moving. The second hand was stuck on 12. It was exactly 9.33. The clock on the register wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was even a customer at the register waiting for my boss to get him cigarettes. I'm betting that would have been his fifth pack of the day. I got the hell out of there. I didn't lock up, didn't turn the lights out, and sorry guys, I didn't grab the security tapes to upload them to the internet. Believe me, that was the last thing on my mind. The people inside were still as statues. I got in my car and prayed it would start. Thankfully it did. About halfway home, time started up again. The static from the radio turned into music like it's supposed to be. And from what I could tell by listening to the host talk in between songs, no one noticed the time freeze. Or whatever it was. I was the only one. Well, I'm sure Jeremy noticed as well. I still have no clue where he is or what he's doing. I'm hiding in my room and calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I ever got through to them before, or I might have called them five times and they think I'm playing some stupid prank. I'm scared for my life at this point. I'll update tomorrow if I can. I finally fell asleep last night around four. I have no idea how I did it. I guess exhaustion finally got the best of me.
This morning I woke up to my phone ringing. It was my boss. He'd been calling me since about six. He woke up when time turned back on last night and immediately called the cops. They came by to see what was wrong and he told them everything. The police around here are small time guys. They were more concerned with the missing motor oil than anything. But my boss figured he would take it as long as he had their attention. They decided to go looking for Jeremy. We keep all of our employee applications on file, and since Jeremy just started working here, his was easy to find. They checked the address on it and headed over to his house. You're not going to believe what they found. The address Jeremy listed on his application was an empty lot, or at least, now it is. There used to be a house there, but it burned down in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembers that fire. A family of four used to live there way back when. Rumor has it that they had an estranged son, who they never really talked about. But I can't say for sure if that's true. What I can say is true is that after an insurance investigation, the fire was ruled arson. The entire house was soaked in oil, and torched with a Molotov cocktail. The entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it either. Rumor has it when they tried to contact the estranged son, no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me this, and I freaked out. Then he asked me to come to the gas station. What, are you crazy? I said. But he assured me that the cops were there with him. Then he dropped a bomb. The FBI were also in town, and they were going to talk to me one way or another. So I might as well come in. It was about 7.15, and I wanted to go back to bed, but I figured I wouldn't be able to sleep much more anyway. So I went down. Ben in suits greeted me and told me to have a seat. We went over everything two or three times, until they got all the details down. I told them about everything. Jeremy, the security tapes, last night at work. Everything. Finally, after I finished, one of the agents said, Oh Christ, we've got another one on our hands. Then they made me sign a bunch of papers, saying I wouldn't tell anyone about what happened, so I can't say much more. I might be breaking the law just by posting this. So now I'm home again. I'm not sure what to do with myself. That agent's words when I told him, they're going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Anyway, I've got to go. I have some errands to run today. And then I have to go to work to pick up some tapes. My boss and I think this new guy Jeremy is stealing motor oil. And I have to watch a bunch of security footage to see if I can catch him doing it. I have better things to do. But my boss is paying me overtime. Under the table. And I'm trying to save up for a vacation. So I could really use the money. It should be pretty simple. The oil always goes missing right after his shifts. I figure I'll just watch the tapes. Catch him in the act. And that'll be that. After I archived it, I was instructed to take it all down, so there wasn't even a trace of it. And this bothers you? I mean, I guess, but, uh... Oh, uh, what time is it? What? What time is it? I have... 5.33. We've just started. You have 57 more minutes. You wouldn't lie to me, right? What does your watch say? You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Chicka chicka.